everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Shawnee Missy Me and I help students optimize their medical school application to increase their chances of getting accepted into medical school. And today we are talking about what I wish I knew before starting medical school, part three. Be sure to check out part one and part two of this series. Now, particularly in this video, I'm gonna talk about specialty related topics. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button so that you don't miss any of my videos. So one thing that I noticed, um, I guess toward the end of my medical school year is that I really didn't give myself an opportunity to explore uh, the different specialties. So all medical students are gonna complete required core rotations that include internal medicine, pediatrics, surgery, psychiatry, OBGYN, family medicine, things like that. And so you're gonna get that experience during your clinical rotations anyway for those specialties because they are required. But there are a lot of specialties that are not required to complete as a clinical rotation while in medical school that you may get that you may be interested in and want to ultimately do as your career. Um, and if you don't ever like do it or see it, how would you know if you like it? And how would you know that you need to do what's necessary to build your application in preparation to applying to that specialty? Answer is, is that you just don't know. Um, and so what I mean by that, so if you're a, a, a pre-med student or a medical student that's interested in radiology, uh, reading CT scans, x-rays, doing procedures if you wanna do interventional radiology, um, if you're interested in that, um, go ahead and try to shadow a radiologist first year of medical school, definitely by second year. Don't wait until your third year elective to do radiology because you might not like it, right? <laughs> and then on the flip side, you may be someone who thinks you're going to hate doing radiology because you've heard that they're boring, they sit in the basement all day, in a dark basement all day looking at images, it's going to hurt your eyes, you're not really good at video games all that type of stuff, whatever you heard. And then you turn, it turns out you actually like radiology more than you thought, and you didn't give yourself enough time to prepare your application for a radiology residency program. It's very important to start early. Um, a lot of people say, don't have your mind set on any particular specialty early in the game. And I agree with that. Like you should never be set in stone on really anything. Um, always remain open, but you do need to have some type of interest or be able to uh, self-reflect and say, okay, what setting or what environment do I think I will thrive the most? Or do you think I will, do I think that I will do well in? Um, once you determine what setting you want to be in or what type of patient population you think you may want, then obviously you will want to go towards specialties that would provide that. But at the same time, you want to remain open to other specialties that you really didn't consider. And so I have a great example. Um, I did not start medical school thinking that I was going to be an anesthesiologist. Matter of fact, I wanted to be an OBGYN. Um, and so my first two years, I joined clubs, I shadowed, I uh, was actually in the process of starting a research uh, project with, uh, with the OBGYN department. And then I ended up switching uh, middle to end of my third year into anesthesia. Well, not switching into anesthesia, but ch choosing to apply to anesthesia instead of OB. Um, and I had my reasons of why I didn't choose OB, but the point is, is that I was pretty much set on what I thought I was gonna do, and I wasted two and a half years, almost three years, of not preparing my application for anesthesia because I was set on OB. One thing about anesthesia is it's not a required rotation. It's mostly an elective at most medical schools. And if you don't choose to take the anesthesia elective or you're not by default put into the anesthesia elective, you'll never really know if you like it or if you don't like it. Same for radiology, uh, same for pathology, things like that, you know, same for dermatology. They're not required rotations. So if you don't make the effort to participate in those rotations, then you will never know what you like and what you don't like. And what you don't wanna do is get to the end of your third year, getting ready to apply to residency programs and not know what you wanna do, or apply to a residency program, match it to a particular specialty, and then end up changing your mind about something one or two years uh, down the road. It happens, and so if it happens, it is what it is, like you just make the adjustment, but if you can prevent it, that's always best. So right along number one, number two is actually exploring more subspecialties or fellowship opportunities within the specialty of your choice. So I knew that I liked anesthesia after doing the anesthesia elective, um, but I wish I would have gotten more exposure to the subspecialties um, in my 
third and fourth year anesthesia electives just to get a more clear picture of what the anesthesiologist actually does and everything that I could be potentially responsible for later on in my career. Because depending on where you work, you may get exposed to all types of anesthesia cases or you may be very, very so specialized and only do a subset of cases. So even in anesthesia, if I don't want to do neuroanesthesia or cardiac anesthesia or regional anesthesia, things like that, then I need to know, okay, what subset of uh, procedures and, and surgeries do I want to do? What patient population do I mainly want to focus on? Um, and, and again, prepare my application for fellowship in the direction of the area that I think I want to be in. And again, you only know that by getting experience. And obviously in residency, you're going to do rotations in every single subspecialty uh, specific to your specialty. So you're going to get the exposure eventually, but just like everything else, applications start so far in advance that by the time you apply for a fellowship, you may not have experienced every subspecialty within your field. So again, having an interest and in taking the initiative to try to get some exposure, maybe outside of your clinical duties, a volunteer, a hey doc, can I meet up with you for a shift just to see what it's like type thing. Make sure you feel comfortable in the environment. Make sure it's something that you feel like you can do for the rest of your life. And that'll help you determine what's best for you as far as choosing your specialty, even a subspecialty. And going along with that brings me to point number three, which is appreciating your clinical rotations. Um, I have I, I have several reasons why I say that. One being that most people go through the clinical rotations as uh, kind of like another task or uh, you kind of treat it how you treat your classes. You have to show up every day, do well, get a good evaluation at the end of the day, do well on the shelf exam. That's how we treat it. But honestly, it's really more than that. It's really more than just an audition if it's the specialty that you're trying to go into. It's more than just showing up and, uh, you know, being active and participating so that you can get a good uh, evaluation. Um, you really should take a full advantage of all your clinical rotations, whether you're interested in it or not, because I feel like when you get out and practice, it's really good just to have a broad knowledge of everything. And so there are a lot of things that I don't really remember about psychiatry um, that I feel like I would uh, it, it would benefit me right now going through residency, understanding the different psychiatric conditions, the medications that are commonly prescribed, how they affect the anesthetics that we give. Um, if I would have paid more attention or been more, more appreciative of my psych rotation, I may have all the bipolar medications that I'm memorized. Or like if I would have paid more attention to neurology, I would have all the seizure diagnoses and seizure medications like, you know, memorized to heart or at least be able to appreciate it more so that I could apply it here in anesthesia when I have a patient that comes in with a history of seizure disorder. So I think that uh, really, really taking the time to learn as much as you can from every single rotation is super important. And it may be the last time that you'll ever do or see that type of medicine. So uh, for radiology, I um, I didn't do it as a medical student, but I got the opportunity to do a radiology rotation as a intern in residency. And that's probably the last time I'll ever do a paracentesis or a thoracentesis other than on a critical care rotation. If I don't do critical care medicine as an anesthesiologist, I likely won't do lumbar punctures, I won't do thoracentesis, I won't do those uh, procedures that other specialties typically do. So definitely take full advantage of your clinical rotations, whether you are interested in that rotation or not, it will definitely help you out in the long run. You'll feel more competent as a physician. Number four is competition is real, okay guys? So understanding that you are being compared to all of your other colleagues, plus every other person in your class across America and internationally, you are competing for residency spots. And in some specialties, there are like little to no spots, right? And so you have a lot of people applying to a few seats. It definitely raises the competition. It's just like medical school. There are more applicants than seats. So competition is high. Make sure you understand that some specialties are extremely competitive. And if you are interested in dermatology, radiology, things like that, you have to have great scores. You have to have great letters of recommendation. You have to have great clinical exposure in order to be able to compete with the other medical students who are also applying to radiology. And then the last thing I wish I knew before starting medical school is how the match process actually 
works. And I'm gonna do a video about the match. Um, I've had several students ask me about this. I just haven't got a, around to it. But there is a video online that I will try to link down at the bottom uh, so that you guys can take a look at it and try to get a better understanding of what the match process is. But that's one thing that I really wish I understood uh, more uh, ahead of time before versus like right before it was time to submit our rank list uh, because the match does matter. And at the end of the day, when you choose a specialty and a program, there's a system that determines where you ultimately end up. And if you choose to participate in the match, then by default, wherever you end up matching is where you have to complete your training unless there's extenuating circumstances that allow you to not be able to do that. Understanding the match is one thing that I really, really wish I knew before starting med school. So I hope this video was helpful. Again, this was part three of a three-part series. If you haven't checked out part one and two, you should do that now. Comment below if you have any questions or concerns. Always, as you know, you can hit me up on Instagram, DM me. And if you really need to get in contact with me, email is the best way to do that. Hope this was helpful. You guys have a good day.